If you've been struggling with how to just quickly and effortlessly get boats from a scene onto your page, this is the video for you. We will be looking at how shapes make boats and how they're not so complex after all. So today we are going to draw ourselves a couple of boats and we're going to do it the simple way. We're going to split it into shapes. So I'm going to show you how shapes really simply apply to our boats. Now shapes you often think of as a square, but the problem with boats is that they're often in perspective, they are odd shapes, and so we can normally see more than just a square. In fact, what we can see is we can see that it's a 3D shape. So instead of a, a square, we have a cube. Now a cube is just a collection of squares in perspective. This is a cube where you can see two sides. This is a cube where you can see three sides. And, you know, in in sensible reality, we can never see more than three sides of a cube. I'm sure there are exceptions where weird rules like that are broken, but really, we only ever need to think about the 3D shapes as, as a small number of their sides. So what do I mean? Like, let's Let's actually put that into practice. How are we finding these shapes? In our boat. So, got our reference photo, and let's start with the boat on the left. So, if we look at its cabin, what do we see? We see a big cuboid, so it's a rectangular cube. So, what we can do, we can find one side, and that side sets the perspective. And you can see this front corner closest to us is at an angle, and that is showing us that it's tilting over and also that it's sort of tilting towards us a little. And then we can find the other side. So the face facing us of our cube. And then we can find the face going away from us. And if we get these angles, the size, uh, the, the sides of this two faces of our cube right, suddenly we have set the scene for the whole boat. And we can just add in the third side, the final side that we can see. And we can start adding in some of our lovely little details like these windows. Perhaps even this little flag, you know, these are all just shapes. Got this little sort of pole at the back. And now we want to add in the front of the boat, or the, the front, the boat of the boat, I guess, the cabin, and then the, someone tell me what it's called, the undercarriage of the boat, we'll call it for now. And what is that? Well, again, it's a series of simple shapes. So this time I'm going to just start describing it again in 2D shapes. So what we've got is a little rectangle coming in underneath, which ends about here. And why does it end? It's because it starts curving and it becomes more of a, a separate triangle, which ends about here. Then the other edge of this triangle going down is curved. So we can still think of it as a triangle, even though it's not a strict triangle because it's curved. If we turn, you know, we've got a triangle, that's a triangle. If in our heads we find something which looks like this, and we just call it a triangle, but recognize it's got a curved sign, it becomes a curved side, it becomes much easier to draw. So even when things aren't strictly a triangle or a square, think of them in the simplest possible terms and just be flexible with how you're making your marks. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to introduce, look, we've got this kind of gravelly, uh, pebbly beach. If I bring that in, that helps us build the rest of the bottom of this boat. So remember we had a rectangle, so just get the the bottom of this rectangle and that ends about here and it starts curving we just follow the natural curve and then underneath we've got another sort of rectangle and that just flows and hits the bottom of the, the bottom of the beach here we can bring in the back of the boat and then we're done with our big shapes and we can start just adding in those details which again basically just little shapes so we've got this metal work we can just add that in I'm not drawing the back side of this boat, but that's easy to add in as well. We can maybe black in the windows because we can see they're very dark, aren't they, in the in the actual uh, photo. We could even add in this lovely little rope and attach it to an anchor because that, again, is a bit of a characterful thing that we've seen in our scene. Nice thing with 3D shapes is to remember that 3D almost always, not not every single time, but almost always 3D means light and shadow because that's how our eye is actually interpreting that something is 3D. So we just 
can hatch in those areas of, of shadow. And there we go. So we've got a lovely bit of shadow. It just provides a bit more shape to our 3D shapes. Just spotted a lovely ring here as well. So what have we done? We've done shapes. We've thought about 3D shapes and 2D shapes. We've thought about how shadow impacts it and also how adding those little details brings it to life. And then we can move on and do the next boat. So if we just look, where's this boat? Where's the top of this boat here? compared to the other boat. It should be, the other boat should start just, I think, a little bit higher. But we're gonna just do exactly the same process. So we've got our cube. This is much more of a cube. And we just set the scene with those first few lines. And we can then immediately start adding in some of the smaller shapes if we want. And then we find our shapes underneath. We kind of got the same idea of a, a rectangle going into a triangle with a sort of wobbly end or a wonky end underneath we got another little sort of wobbly rectangle which curves round and meets the front of our wobbly triangle this curves as well just a natural flow of the curve and then we've got a little triangle off to the side as well and again this is all very much in shade and we can now just add all these little bits. So we've got this lovely sort of rope. We've got a couple of barrels or something in the front. It doesn't matter what they are. It only matters that we can see approximately their shape. And as long as you describe things in shape, then you'll get the essence of the scene. We don't need to know, you know what kind of boat this is to be able to draw it as something which represents an accurate sort of depiction of a boat. Similarly, we don't need to know exactly what's on the boat to get the impression of a busy little fishing boat. Again, a little bit of hatching, and it, that hatching on the ground is really important because it just, it grounds the object. It shows where the object is interacting with the ground. For all we know, this object could be floating and actually when it lands, it could it could hit here. But as soon as you draw the, the shadow, actually your eye knows it's not floating, it's on the ground just there. And there we go. So with those simple, simple steps, We've drawn two, not perfect, but pretty effective, simple sketches of lovely little fishing boats. And that is all you need to do. You don't need to be able to draw boats to draw boats. You just need to be able to identify simple shapes, have a really uh, simple appreciation of shadow and just be flexible and loose and not expect perfection. But by not expecting perfection, you'll actually some get something which is perfectly good very easily, very quickly. So here you go, my two little boats. I hope that's been useful. Um, please do like, subscribe. Um, let me know what you think of my little tutorials like this um, because uh, they're fun to do and it's, it's great having ideas from you guys for what to do for these short little brief tips and tricks videos that I produce. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.